The story of the Tashik Tash Neanderthal boy begins in the unforgiving wilds of Central Asia, in what we now call Uzbekistan, more than 70,000 years ago. He lived during a time when life was short, brutal and unforgiving, where only the strongest survived. His people were savages by the standards of any civilized mind, barbarians in their ways, deeply connected to the harsh earth that both nurtured and punished them. This boy, who came to be laid to rest in a cave among the mountains, would one day be found with ibex horns carefully placed around him, symbols of strength and survival that reflected the brutal world in which he and his people lived. The Neanderthals of Teshiktash were not the primitive creatures often imagined. They were short but stocky, with powerful limbs built for strength. Their thick, brutish brows cast shadows over large eyes, while their faces, wide and flat, bespoke a primal cunning. Their skin, roughened by the wind and sun, was covered in scars from the hunt, and their bodies bore the marks of frequent injuries, broken bones that had healed, puncture wounds from wild animals and gashes from flint tools. These were not creatures of leisure, but true barbarians whose lives were filled with struggle and hardship. Every day brought new dangers, the teeth of predators, the cold biting winds of the steppe, or the ever-looming threat of hunger. Life was a fight for survival, and the Neanderthals of the region had little time for anything but the most basic necessities. They lived a savage existence, often eating the raw, bloodied meat of animals they felled with crude spears. Their tools were simple yet effective, fashioned from stone and bone, sharp-edged and brutal in their design, much like the people themselves. The boy, whose remains would one day be uncovered by modern archaeologists, was born into this world of animistic savagery. His father was a hunter, his mother a gatherer, both of them hardened by the constant struggle against the natural world. They were members of a small group, a family-like clan that roamed the valleys and hills near what is now the Teshik Tash cave, living off the land and leaving nothing but footprints and the remains of their crude camps in their wake. From the moment he was born, the boy was introduced to a life of brutality. His birth was no celebration of joy, but a continuation of the cycle of survival. His mother gave birth to him in the depths of a cold winter night, her cries swallowed by the wind as she lay beside the fire in a makeshift shelter of animal skins. The air was frigid, the scent of blood and sweat thick around them. His father, stoic and silent, stood guard at the mouth of the cave with a flint spear, scanning the snowy expanse for predators that might seek to take advantage of their moment of weakness. Even as an infant, the boy was exposed to the harsh realities of Neanderthal life. He was bundled in the fur of a wolf, the warmth of its pelt offering the only protection against the cold. His mother fed him with rough hands, cracked and calloused from years of foraging for roots and berries. Her milk, barely enough to sustain him, carried the legacy of countless generations of survivors. The clan had no time to coddle their young. The boy was one of several children born that year, though not all would survive. As soon as he was strong enough, he was carried on his mother's back as she roamed the landscape searching for food. When he could walk, he was expected to keep up with the adults, to follow in their path as they crossed the rough terrain. Such was the way of the Neanderthals, a brutal law of the wild that cared for no one. By the age of five, the boy had already begun to take part in the hunts, silently watching as the men of the clan stalked animals through the forest. He learned the brutal bloody techniques of survival, how to use a sharpened stone to flay the flesh from a fallen animal, how to crack its bones to suck the marrow from within. The scent of blood was familiar to him, the sight of it splattered across the snow, nothing to fear. Blood was life, and the spilling of it was necessary for the clan to survive. The most revered prey among his people were the Siberian ibex, creatures as wild as the Neanderthals themselves. With their great curving horns and sharp hooves, the ibex were a challenge to kill, often leading hunters into dangerous rocky heights where a single misstep could mean death. But the reward was worth the risk. The ibex provided meat, bones for tools, and most importantly, the horns, which held deep significance for the clan. 
The ibex horns were believed to be imbued with power, symbols of strength and survival in a brutal world. To take down such a creature was a feat of great honour, and the horns were often kept as trophies, hung above the fire in the cave, or kept as a mark of status by the hunters who had felled them. It was not just a matter of sustenance. It was a matter of spiritual survival in a world that cared little for the lives of men. The boy grew up under this shadow of death, learning to respect the animals they hunted and the power that the ibex horns represented. He watched as his father and the other men of the clan painted their faces with blood before a hunt, a ritualistic gesture meant to call upon the spirits of the mountains to guide them. The hunt was a brutal dance, one that often ended in the spilling of Neanderthal blood as well as that of their prey. By the time the boy reached early adolescence, his body had already begun to take on the brutish form of his kin. He was thick-limbed and powerful, his muscles hard from carrying stones and hunting weapons. His brow was heavy, casting a shadow over his piercing eyes, and his jaw was wide, giving him a savage appearance. Like the other men of his clan, he bore the marks of his brutal life on his skin, scars from wounds and the teeth of wild animals. He had already killed his first ibex by the age of twelve, a rite of passage among his people. It had been a brutal affair. The animal had led him high into the craggy mountains, and the boy had nearly fallen to his death before finally plunging his spear into the creature's heart. As the ibex had bled out, its great horns resting on the rocky ground, the boy had felt a savage pride well up inside him. He had proven himself a man, a hunter, a barbarian among barbarians. His father had taken the horns of the fallen ibex and presented them to the boy in front of the clan. They were his now, a symbol of his place among the hunters of his people. The horns were hung above their fire, and every time the boy looked at them, he was reminded of the savage world he lived in, a world where strength was the only thing that mattered. The boy's life, however, was destined to be short. A harsh winter had swept across the steppe, and food had become scarce. The boy struggled to keep up with the rest of the clan. His body, once strong and vital, was now frail. A sickness took hold of him, one that the clan could not cure. They had no way of fighting the unseen forces that ravaged his body. The boy's final days were spent lying near the fire in their cave, his breath shallow, his once bright eyes dimming. His father, ever stoic, watched over him, but did nothing to ease his passing. Such was the way of their people. Death was a part of life, and the weak were not mourned. They were merely one more step in the brutal cycle of existence. When the boy died, his clan gathered around his small body. His father, silent and grim, carried the boy into the cave where generations of their people had been laid to rest. It was a place of silence, where the walls echoed the savage lives of the dead. There the clan prepared the boy's body for burial. But this burial was different. Around the boy's body they placed the ibex horns he had earned in his young life. These horns were not merely symbols of his prowess as a hunter, but carried deep spiritual significance. In the minds of the Neanderthals, the horns represented the strength and resilience of the ibex, and by placing them around the boy, they believed they were imbuing him with that same power in death. The horns, sharp and curving, framed his small body, a testament to the life he had lived, short and brutal as it was. The ibex horns also signified a kind of protection in the afterlife, a belief that the boy, like the ibex, would roam the wilds of the spirit world, forever hunting, forever surviving. To the Neanderthals, death was not an end, but a continuation of the savage struggle they had always known, and the ibex horns would guide him through the afterlife. Prior to the discovery of the Teshik Tash skull, it was believed that Neanderthals had not travelled far enough east to reach Central Asia. This changed when the Teshik Tash skull was found. A famed archaeologist from the Soviet Union named Alexei Pavlovich Okladnikov made the discovery of the remains in the year 1938. According to reports at the time, they were discovered in a pit that was relatively shallow and were associated with five pairs of horn cores from Siberian ibex. Because of this, a number of researchers have come to the conclusion that the child was buried in a ritualistic manner. 
Recently, the Teshiktash skull was subjected to DNA analysis, which unequivocally demonstrated that the skull belonged to the Neanderthal species. Thank you for watching this video. Before you go, please subscribe, share and check out our other narratives of the lives of ancient mankind, and take care.